I'm going to have a turn now, and then hopefully you can stand there. Final. So I'm going to tell you a story now. I started you off on my theme for my story tonight, which is... How you pretend to speak with all of your... Yeah, exactly. Good. That was a test. You were listening. I just noticed this was meant to be... Yeah, so how I became a speech pathologist and how you think some days are bad and then you find out things can get worse. And so you realise that oh, those bad days weren't that bad after all. They were like pretty good, really. I want to tell you a time when that happened to me. So I, like wanted to, I didn't know what I wanted to do at high school. I went to Warrigal High. Right. Warrigal High. Because we lived in Warrigal. Do you know Warrigal? It's in Gippsland. <laughs> yeah. It's wet. It's cold. It's a horrible place to live as a teenager. No public transport. Just raining all the time, but then we moved to Neerham South, which is worse than Warrigal, if you can believe it's worse. And what Neerham South High School, like, I wanted to escape. There was no way I was going to Neerham South High School. I was never going to get out of there if I, if I went there. So I stayed and travelled to Warrigal every day. So there was a bus to Warrigal I had to catch from Neerham South. Half an hour ride. It's okay. Stood on the bus because we were the last stop. Got sexually harassed all the way into Warrigal by year 11, but I think it was year seven. Year seven. They were like, do you give head jobs? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what a head job was. I just was one of these people that just was, you know, very, very agreeable. <laughs> anyway, then there was another bus. It took an hour. Like, I thought that was the bad bus because it took an hour and I was didn't want to take an hour to get to school. I was like, I hang, hang on, I'm going to take that bus. I'm going to take that bus now. It took an hour to get to school instead of half an hour just to avoid just, you know, learning some words that yeah. probably didn't really need to know. So anyway, so I moved to Neerham South, but I really needed to escape. Anyway, Neerham South, so I travelled to Warrigal every day to go to school. Warrigal High School wasn't too bad, better than Neerham South. We had a careers advisor called... We didn't usually call our teachers by their last, by their first names, but he was Damien. We had to call him Damien, and he'd get the Year Twelve boys. I just need a check. I'll show you Damien's his stats. All right, need a check. Here we go. Props. So prop. Here we go. Get the Year Twelve girls in and give them career advice. Hi. Oh, <laughs> oh Damien. <laughs> call me Damien. <laughs> yeah, that was my careers advisor. He knew nothing. <laughs> oh, I want to help people. I thought helping people was a good thing, so I want to help people. So I thought I'd be a doctor. He's like, yeah, put down medicine and then put down science as your second choice, in case you don't get in, because no one gets into medicine from Warrigal High School. And then, otherwise law. You put down law first time and then you get into, you don't get in. <laughs> so you put down business as your second choice and you get into that maybe. Anyway, so I put down medicine as my first choice. But um, guess what? Didn't get into medicine. Got good marks, not good enough for medicine. So I got into science, right? <laughs> science. What do you do when you do a science degree? Like, it's just one step up from an arts degree. <laughs> really. Nobody, nobody knows that. Nobody knows that. You look through the papers, there's no job that says scientist. Okay, I did not know what I was going to do with that. So I, um, I was in a science degree that I didn't want to do. And I'm pretty miserable about it. But as luck would have it, <laughs> luck would have it, one day I was going on a pub crawl with my boyfriend at the time, Kelvin, and I got hit by a car. <laughs> no. Which was lucky because no. it was just before the census at the uni, so I could drop out of the course and I still use my marks to get into another course without any penalty. <laughs> At the time, though, I did not realise that it was such a good opportunity, right? I did not realise I was having a good day that day. <laughs> Turns out it was a good day. Looking back, it meant that I got to get out of the science degree and I still got to use my marks from Year 12. So this is where I'm going to tell you how I found out about speech pathology. I, um, I haven't heard of speech pathology. Who has? Apart yeah. from, did you know about it before you met me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. The marketing's working, you see. <laughs> speech pathology. Nobody knew about speech pathology in Neerham South, and you know how I know, because there was a lot of untreated speech problems around Neerham South area, including mine. I had a lisp. Had a lisp. Can you hear it a little bit? Lisp. Lisp. And I went out with this guy called 
Greg. <laughs> his name was Greg, but he couldn't say his R's, right? I dumped him because of that. He was very cute, tall, handsome, footballer. No speech therapy in there in South, though. <sighs> Poor Greg. Fancy having to introduce yourself to everyone called Greg. My name is Greg. My name's Greg. <laughs> it's very comical. <sighs> Funny he doesn't know about speech pathology. So I, I went to hospital actually, I got sent to hospital, it was a pretty funny story really, got to hospital and I was in a room with four other patients, myself of course, across from me was a lady who couldn't speak because she'd had a stroke and all she could say was, tee tee tee, Krisha, 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 and she couldn't move one of her left side, so, sorry, her right side, right side, and she was um, always calling for the nurse because she couldn't do anything herself. So they put the buzzer just a little bit far away so she couldn't quite reach it. But I told you I was a very helpful person. So I would just like buzz, buzz, buzz the nurse. And they'd come and say, hello, are you right? And I'd say, no, but she, I'm fine, but she needs help. So I'd like to tee in there. And then there was a lady on the other side who had obviously had cancer treatment and she would fall from that. Unfortunately, she was very sick. And then there was this old lady in the corner and um, she would be like, I'm dry! I'm drink! I'm dry! I want a drink! That's what she did. That's what she did while we were all in hospital recovering. She was screaming out for it because she was a bit of a piss head. A little bit of a piss head. She was in for some sort of procedure. And um, she was screaming that out. But luckily she found her catheter bag. I, I told you she was a piss head. She had a good drink from her catheter bag. It did help us get a bit of sleep. She looked at me over in my bed with my broken leg. She goes, you're a virgin, aren't you? <laughs> I can tell. And I was like, oh, can you? Yeah, so I have always had that kind of little bit innocent but hiding my other side, which was very actually good. The reason moving to Nerum South was so good is because I was very good in Warrigal. But in Nerum South, I was really quite different from the way I was in Warrigal. I, um, I used to drink, I used to smoke, I used to wag school. Yeah, nobody knew about that in Warrigal. So it was really great for me. I had a double life. So this lady was obviously uh, picking up on that. So I was in hospital bed, broken leg, 18 years old. I thought, okay, here's an opportunity. Let's see what other career options I might have. So I started uh, making appointments with all of the other health professionals in the hospital to see what their, uh, what their jobs were like. Decided I didn't like podiatry, yeah. smelly feet, <laughs> OT, what the fuck is that? People have a hard time understanding speech pathology, what the fuck is OT, nobody knows. Speech pathology was interesting. I made an interview and I went in and I, I spoke to the speech pathologist and uh, she decided to do a test with me. Like it's, uh, we do tests, you have to test your language and your speech. And I, I did it and I thought it was like sale of the century. So if you said an answer, you couldn't change your mind. So I was saying things and I was like, oh, hang on, no, no, that's not right. But I didn't realise I could change it. And I got to the end of the test and I was like, oh, I said to her, I don't think I did very well. She said, oh, you did better with, than someone with a head injury. <laughs> I was like, I am inspired to be a professional like you. <laughs> so yeah, that's when I decided speech pathology sounded good. So yeah, that's where um, the story came, that I, I got a scar on my knee to cover up my little mole. There you go, this is my mole. This is the scar from that injury of hitting the, uh, hit, getting hit by a car. I didn't really tell you much about that. It was a hit and run accident. I was crossing the road and the guy ran through the red light. And in the movies, you bounce. <laughs> Go that way, go underneath. This is what really happens. <laughs> Get hit by the car and I bounced onto the windscreen and actually made eye contact about that far away from the driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. He was like... <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> and then I, I, I bounced back on the road and I was like, fuck, I've got to get off the road. And I took a step and my leg just flew out like that. And I was like, I don't think it's meant to do that, but I've got to get off the road. I got off the road and, um, yeah, funny thing about that is, he uh, went and 
took off. Someone got his license plate and the police tracked him down. He went to the police station, he gave a statement, said, I went across on the red. So I got a $10 fine for jaywalking because <laughs> they believed him. So like I was in hospital a month, two months later, I was still in hospital and I get a fine in the mail of $10. Oh my God, his word against mine apparently. You know, I thought I'd had a bad day that day. I was in the same ward when I got moved to rehab with a woman who had been hit by a car on a horse on Mount Disappointment. Oh, and she had two broken arms and two broken legs, which was pretty inconvenient. With a horse. Dead. But she was lucky because she was in the room with me and I was just pushing, I could just push her bed like this outside to get some fresh air so we could have a ciggy. <laughs> That's what I did. That was helpful, helpful like that. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm going to finish off this story. And um, I'm getting a bit dry, but I just want to finish off because I just want to say a bit more about how, you know, speech pathology, you know, in the old days, we weren't able to say, you know, I, I couldn't say how I got into the course. I was worried when I arrived, sorry, jumping around, when I arrived to sign up for speech pathology, There were two lines. First line to sign the form. I could do that, <coughs> right? I had academic ability. The second line though was a speech screening test. And that got me worried because I have a lisp. I'm like, I oh, know, I got this far. And now I've got to go in there and get tested and they won't let me in the course. Like, it did not occur to me that there are speech pathologists who could actually maybe fix my list, right? Did not even occur to me. Like, I was there doing the course, but I, was, I had no belief. <laughs> so I, I bailed. I'm in the line, and we're all, like, going, you know, going to the gas chambers. And I'm just like, fuck this. I'm out. And I thought, I, I, I skipped. I didn't do the screener. For two, four-year course... Three years, I was scared they were going to find out I had a lisp and I was going to get kicked out. Third year, I got caught. <laughs> got caught and someone said, Paula, um, I've heard that you've got a lisp. I was like, oh, what? She said, okay, so just do this. And she just told me how to do... She showed me how to do an S. I did it from that day on. Wow. Like, from that day on, I could say my S was except for when I spoke to her or about her. <laughs> So I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> All those stress for nothing. So yeah, I got to be a speech pathologist in the end. But nowadays I think I'm a speech pathologist, at, but I, I think I would, you know, let's embrace diversity in speech. Like I don't, I think it's discriminating now to be saying someone should change their speech because they're a speech pathologist. Like that's not fair, is it? Don't you think? Yeah. I think we should, I think I should like use it as like a brand, it's my signature speech problem. And if someone comes to me, so I say, hello, you know, nice to meet you. I noticed you don't have a lisp. Would you like one? <laughs> so you think? And then I could like start a trend where people have lisps, people are out there and they're like, oh, I like that lisp you've got, where did you get that? Paula Ferrari speech pathology, yeah. <laughs> Get your lisp here. And like I could do a range of speech disorders. Like, I mean, just not, not restricted to lisps. I could teach you stuttering. W for us. See, that makes me think, you know, thinking about what, you know, what was a good day and what was a bad day. Like, I dumped Greg. I dumped Greg. <laughs> what could have been? Like, what could have been? Because my next, like, the, when I think about the relationships I had after him, like, one was an abusive alcoholic and one died. Uh. I'm like, you know... I'm just thinking maybe I was a bit hard on Greg. <laughs> like maybe I should try and find him on Facebook. <laughs> I have no idea what his last name was or even what he looks like now. I'd have to do the sound check. He's probably still in the of South and he probably still can't say his, his ass. So I just have to go back and, you know, just... <laughs> I know how well he's aged. <laughs> Look, that'll do me. Okay, thanks very much. Now, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh, it's like a dust star, Sean. Yeah, yeah, okay. So Whoa. now, that is the end of our show, except for one more act. We have the wonderful Dougie Chapel, who's come here, and that is, um, this will be our final act for the night, and I'd just like to say um, thank you to everyone for